Hey guys, I'm Siobhan. This is my husband, Mark. We're both Canadian doctors and we want you to join us as we fly up north and help out with the doctor shortage. We want to take you behind the scenes and the typical day working in a northern hospital and all the excitement that comes along with that. When Mark and I travel, we love listening to audiobooks together. So I'm really excited to partner with Audible for this video. Right now, we're listening to Outlive by Peter Atia a doctor who focuses on longevity medicine, and he talks about what we can do to live with a better quality of life for longer. He's really challenging our medical system that focuses so heavily on treating illnesses once we've already developed them, rather than focusing on prevention and early detection. For Mark and I, a big part of our relationship is learning and growing together, and Audible's been a part of that for years now. And not just for medical topics either. Audible has one of the largest libraries of titles on the market, and as a member, you get to choose one new title every month. So if you want to give it a try, use this link or text Violin MD to 500-500 to get a free 30-day trial. Overall metabolic health and hemoglobin A1C, which is not very specific by itself. All right, here we are back again. Day one is always such a big day. So mentally, I am prepared to be here as late as we need to get to know all the patients and uh, feel settled. So stage one, let's check out the list, see how many patients we've got and get settled for the day. Hi, it's Dr. Deshauer we're returning a page. Oh, no, I, I literally just got here. Fill me in. Oh, I see. And is this new? Okay, yeah, sounds good. I'll meet you upstairs. Yeah, I'll, I'll come see him right now. Okay, thanks. Okay, that was one of the nurses upstairs telling me that one of our patients has a very distended abdomen that's extremely painful, and this is new. So I just wanna take a quick look at his chart so that I'm a bit familiar, and then we'll head right upstairs. From what I can see here, um, this patient was admitted with dehydration and diarrhea. And since he's been here, he's been diagnosed with an infection called C. diff and he's been getting treatment. But the blood work from this morning shows a really high white blood cell count and his kidney function is getting worse. Okay, that gives us some context. So let's head up. Walking into the room, I see a man lying in bed with his nurse at the bedside. I examine him and find his abdomen is severely distended and very tender. His blood pressure is a bit low and he has a fever. So I ask the nurse to hang a one liter bolus of IV fluids now and to give some additional antibiotics while I go and order some more tests. Now that's a really concerning physical exam. That's not what I expected. His abdomen was so distended and even with such a small amount of pressure, as I released it, he was jumping in pain. So that makes me think, could it be a surgical abdomen? Very concerning. So I'm gonna get some stat blood work and also a stat portable abdominal x-ray. Easiest thing, fastest, and if we need to get a CT scan, we'll get it after. Okay, looks like the x-ray's up. Whoa. Holy mackerel. Okay, this is a shocking x-ray. This is a toxic megacolon, and you can see how big and distended the bowel is. This is a rare and potentially deadly complication of a C. diff infection, although it can also happen with other types of infections or bowel inflammation. This is extremely concerning. Um, I've just ordered a stat CT scan of his abdomen and I'm going to call general surgery right now to give them a heads up. Yeah, I called radiology. They're going to be bringing him down for the CT scan. Great. Okay, so we're going to be watching him and monitoring very closely. Get that opinion from the surgeon, see what the CT scan shows and just keep supporting his blood pressure until we get some answers. Right, not how I expected the day to start. But now let's head to the emergency department and see the new patients that came in overnight. I meet a woman in her 20s who presented to hospital with severe right lower abdominal pain, diarrhea, and fever. Now, when you hear this, you have to think about surgical problems like appendicitis or ovarian torsion, 
which is a medical emergency where the ovary becomes twisted and the blood supply gets cut off. So in the emergency department, she had a pelvic ultrasound, which was normal, and then a CT scan that showed inflammation in her small bowel. It didn't look like a surgical problem, so she was referred to internal medicine to make the diagnosis. Now, that was a really interesting physical exam. So she has painful areas in her mouth, and I think those are oral ulcers that she's getting. And then she also had a pretty swollen knee. So I was able to get some fluid off that and send it off to the lab. I'm really starting to build this picture that sounds like inflammatory bowel disease. So I think this might be a first presentation of Crohn's disease, but it's way too early to give a diagnosis. It still could be infection or a different type of autoimmune disease. So what we really need is to run some more tests and ideally get a biopsy of that inflamed intestine so we can figure out what it is. So for now, she's gonna stay on IV antibiotics and IV fluids until we figure out what's going on. Man, today is like the GI day. It's all about the bowels. <laughs> Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory bowel disease. It's an autoimmune disease that can cause inflammation anywhere in the gastrointestinal tract. We often say it can affect anywhere from the gum to the bum. Plus, inflammation in the eyes, skin, or joints which I often see as a rheumatologist. Okay, something a little bit different, this time not about a patient's bowels. That was cardiology calling about one of our patients. So this is a woman in her 60s who has become increasingly short of breath. And then she started getting this tightness in her chest that just wouldn't go away. So she came into the hospital and the cardiologists just did an angiogram to look at the arteries of her heart. And as you can imagine, cardiologists don't usually call me in the middle of the day with good news. So they found that she has such bad heart disease that there's only one artery that's open like the size of a pinhole that's keeping her alive. So literally, if a clump of cells clots together in that artery, then her whole heart will be starved of oxygen and there's no way that she would survive that. And although there's an amazing cath lab here, they just don't have the equipment to open up this degree of blockage safely. So right now we're treating her with blood thinners, we're giving her medication to slow down her heart, and we need to transfer her as soon as possible to Toronto to a bigger center to try to save her life. So the cardiologists have already secured her a bed in Toronto, so they've accepted her. And now it sounds like we just have to wait for the helicopter to come. I don't know if it's gonna be today, it might be tomorrow. So at this point, I'm just gonna tell the patient something I normally don't tell anyone, and that's bed rest. She needs to just stay put. I don't even want her to sneeze. Oh, check this out guys. Snacks in the doctor's lounge. And it's actually one of the doctors who brings these in for everyone. So nice. All right, I think that is it for today. I think I've actually seen all my patients and got a handle of the list of everyone now. Oh, and an update on that patient with the toxic megacolon. So his blood pressure just kept dropping. Even though I kept giving him more fluids, it wasn't responding. His fever was getting worse. I was about to transfer him to the ICU when the surgeons decided to take him to the operating room and actually remove his colon, because that's the area that's making him so sick. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm really hoping he pulls through. He'll probably go to the ICU tonight and then I'll see him tomorrow and see how he's doing. So definitely a really eventful first day. <laughs> how are you doing, Mark? Pretty good, actually. I'm almost done. But uh, did you see this email the hospital just sent out? No, I haven't. Let me take a look. What? A bear has been spotted near the South ER parking lot. <laughs> That's how you know we're in Northern Ontario. So what if we come across the bear? Well, I learned this one at summer camp. If it's black, wait, Beth. If it's brown, lie down. Oh. And if it's white, good night. Oh. <laughs> wait, I'm actually kind of nervous. Do you think we're gonna see it? Beware of bear. Oh my god. Do you see anything? No sign of bears. I think we're good. <laughs> okay, we're in. <laughs> Safe and sound. All right, guys, if you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe. And that way, we'll see you in the next video. So, bye, bye for, for now. now.